Hey, Rocketeers, Slothalopolis, back with the Average Gamer guys, doing a little bit more coaching today. I put out a video originally asking for your replays, the in-game uh, view of things, uh, as much as you want to show me, I can look at those and kind of talk a little bit more about the things that you can do better, the things that I see that are popping out at me, and all of that. Uh, we've got some of those in the works, we've got some of those that people have sent in, always looking for more. Feel free to send those, whether it's through Xbox CVR, uh, it's a little bit easier to share those through the PC version, through like a Discord option, all of that stuff, hit us up, let us know whatever's best for you. I did receive a message early on uh, from the first video uh, from a PN pub, Pug Lord, uh, the Lord of all Pugs, that he needed help with aerials. And we're going to do that today. We're going to talk about aerials. We're going to do uh, not really a super beginner type thing, but how to improve as much as possible. Uh, and how I improved just kind of from basically being able to hit the ball into the air, uh, going from there to, to having a little bit more aerial car control and being able to smack some bangers in the net from across from above the, the crossbar. That's really what we're looking for. So you have to treat this game like any other sport. Games are won and lost on the practice field before game day even happens. So if you're if you're looking to improve your aerials, if they're not what they need to be, or if you're just really learning how to do them, period, this is where you need to be. You need to be in training, uh, whether it is in free play or the custom training. We're going to go over some of my favorite custom trainings here shortly. But there's a couple things I want to go over real quick. I'm going to assume that you as a rocket leaguer understand that you need to be able to jump, boost, and uh, air roll, and move your car around at the same time. Uh, I'm going to go based off that, and I'm going to assume you know how to quick aerial. So jump, boost, jump. And if you don't know how to do those things, there's a lot of, there are a lot of uh, tips and tricks and little guides on, on how to on how to do those throughout YouTube. Um, this is basically kind of the most I'm going to cover on this uh, because I think there's a good 45 minutes that I can cover on just aerials alone. So I'm going to try to pare all of this down. So I'm going to assume you know how to do all that and that you can consist consistently quick aerial without backflipping. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about what makes an aerial effective and what makes it not effective. This game is not like FIFA and it's not like 2K. I can't press a button and pass the ball to my teammate. I can't press a button and shoot the ball. So what is going to be important about these things is where on the ball am I, or where on my car am I hitting the ball and where on the ball am I hitting with my car? So if I hit low, the ball pops up. If I hit high, the ball stays low. It's, it's kind of a, an equal and opposite reaction, uh, Newton's second law kind of thing that we're going to be looking at, which I think is something that's a, a little bit easier for people to understand. If I hit the ball from here, it's going that way. I get that. What I think people struggle a little bit more, especially with being in the air, is where on the car are you hitting the ball? Because if I'm hitting it with my belly, I'm not getting much. I'm going to bounce off more than the ball is versus if I hit the ball with my hood or kind of my windshield here, I'm going to get more of an upward bounce. And if I hit with my little brush guard that you see here on the front straight on or with the corner of that kind of brush guard, I'm going to smack some bangers. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking for. Uh, but each of these touches have their own their own purpose and their own time to use them. So that's something that we're going to, we're going to cover a little bit more when we're looking at the um, custom trainings, but that's something that is really good to keep in mind. So the free play is great for aerial car control. Uh, Kev Pert is a fantastic resource for this. Um, this, he's somebody that I watched early on and somebody that has a lot of these training exercises. So this is my favorite one. Um, I'm going to go in a circle, this little circle here around the ball. I'm going to be air rolling and I'm going to try to just maintain consistent control, consistent altitude. And I am just going to air roll around and kind of be facing this ball. Um, this is the one I do the most because you can do this kind of without air rolling and just kind of be facing different directions. Um, this is one that, that I'm not great with because I instinctively air roll 
towards the ball whenever I'm doing things. It's I just get up in the air and I just start air rolling towards the ball to kind of put myself in the easiest position to maneuver so that my brain doesn't have to think. Um, because I just don't have the, the, the sheer number of hours that it takes to always know how to move your, bo- your car no matter what which is something that comes with with practice and with time i just don't have it yet so i've kind of created a little cheat in my brain um and my muscle memory and my brain is just automatically going to take me to where it's easiest for me to handle which for me is kind of facing the ball just like that so you're probably going to notice that i use two buttons for air roll i use air roll left and right that is purely a uh preference type thing i have an xbox elite controller which i love to death which allows me a little bit more um button usage on the front because i can use these back paddles uh a lot of people use one air roll button that's fine it's all good do your thing uh it doesn't really matter either way but i'll spend a good amount of time going in that circle facing the ball maintaining car control the other big thing that I also picked up from Kevpert, um, I will link his video down below, is using these boost pads here, like slalom uh, flags, like you're going downhill skiing. So you can kind of toggle ball cam on and off as you get over midfield here, but I'm going around these, I'm kind of making that serpentine effect, and I'm going to turn around in the air and maybe just keep the air going, keep it going in the air and do this little serpentine you kind of have to feel out where they are you can't always see them exactly once you feel pretty confident with that one thing that is fantastic to be able to know and one thing that is fantastic to sit here and practice in free play is a cookser twist so if you're not familiar with a cookser twist uh, if you use the single air roll button i believe you're going to be going air roll button and then down and uh, kind of a diagonal down and to the direction that you're going to do this. And with air roll left and right, you are simply going to be holding down with your air roll. And it's this little twist right here. And it's very simple. It's this little corkscrew kind of thing that if you hold it, you're going to kind of make this, this helix shape, which is kind of how you know you're doing it correctly. But this is fantastic for really drastically changing your angle while you're in the air um i'll uh i'll probably end up tacking on right around this area um it's it's really really good for just altering your direction and your angle completely um so you'll be able to see in this clip that i put in here i'm way too close to the goal, the ball goes over my head, I'm able to go up and I'm able to cook or twist kind of backwards to like really change my angle, get up there and then hit it with the hood of my car to smack it back down. So that's something that is pure practice. Um, if you don't know how to cook or twist, if it's something that's not familiar to you, use the unlimited boost and free play to your advantage, kind of sitting here floating and I'm gonna cook or twist left and then I'll cook or twist right. And I may have to kind of toggle air roll or toggle the uh, ball cam on and off so that I can really see what I'm doing effectively. But I just want to air roll left and right. And so if I'm doing it correctly, I really should stay to where I'm just kind of moving a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. Now my momentum is going to carry me a couple different areas and that's cool. Um, you can, you can kind of let off the boost when you're pointing in those those kind of diagonal directions to stay a little bit more upright and moving left and right. So the, the whole key with the practice on that is just getting the muscle memory to where you are instinctively doing those combinations of button presses, whatever those are for you. Um, you know, like I talked about with, they're going to be different depending on if you go air roll left and right or one button, because once you get comfortable with those, I can stop air rolling about halfway through and all of a sudden, you see that I kind of just like looped around and I have this 90 degree twist to the right because I stopped air rolling at that certain certain point there. And that's something that that's like a fine motor skill. We're building the gross motor skill right now in just cooks or twisting left and right, which are super good. So once you are comfortable with those, we're going to go back to the slalom. The slalom is super great. Oh, I messed up my cooks or twist there, so I'm going to slow it down, twist it left, after I twist it over to the right, twist it right again, and you see I kind of kept the uh, the slalom 
kind of mentality in there I like at the end because you you can do what we did before get to the end turn around do it again I like right there at the end to kind of dive towards the goal uh, because that's going to be the the big plan right is you're going to get to where you need to get and you're going to dive at that ball and hit it into the goal hopefully so that's something I kind of try to do to like finish and boom I score that kind of thing um, so just trying to putting trying to put all of that together pardon me so, like I said, the the practice field is where games are going to be won and lost, and spend the time, and you're really you're really going to be rewarded for it. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite uh, training packs. So we're going to end up in aerial shots, the the pass one, but uh, this double touch read practice, I think for time's sake, I'm going to cut this one out. Uh, but check out the code there. It's a really good one, especially for just like it says, getting double touches off of the backboard. You're going to get up there get all the way up to the ball, hit it off the backboard, and then follow it. It's a really good one. Super defense is one that I usually start with. This is one that I really like to, as I'm getting on, I, I just jump in this one really quick. So this is more of a defensive aerial training. But the reason I do this is because it takes getting up fast, really getting up there. Uh, so I'm, I'm testing my muscle memory, and I'm testing how intellectually ready I am for this uh, for this game because am I backflipping as I try to get up on a quick aerial am I timing things correctly am I able to switch off from what I normally do which is always a quick aerial I can't do a quick aerial there that one is going to take me forward but I'm moving backwards so I have to go backwards and do the double jump and then uh, and then boost up all right and so the timing again am i am i always stuck in the quick aerial all the time because that's one time where muscle memory can really tear you down and that's not really something that you always want to have so am i able to look quick twitch look at it see it and adjust to where i save my I save my dodge right there at the end, so I have to get into the boo or get into the goal and knock the ball out. Uh, the other thing that this is great for is the adjustment after you hit the ball. Are you adjusting correctly? So there, I was like trying to turn to to kind of come out of the goal right there. Didn't quite work out um, because I hit the goal post, but that's the thing that I had in mind. And right there, so I'm not. I'm not comfortable with how that went down. I had ball cam off, which is something that's great to do. Put yourself in awkward positions to where you're not always in the greatest position to save every single ball. Uh, challenge yourself to do this kind of thing, but I backflipped instead of double jumping. And that's something that I, I really would not want to do in game because that would be real awkward. Um, so again, I'm not necessarily hitting these balls exactly how I want them to score, uh, because that's the great thing about defense. You don't have to get the pinpoint accurate shot, but you're just making sure you're coming in at the right angles there. Because if I come in too high on that shot, I'm scoring it on my own goal. So the other one that I go for uh, after I'm feeling confident and I'm feeling like my muscle memory is working, now I'm going to work on the fine motor skills. I'm going to work on my aerial shots training. So this one is just really geared towards a, a lot of these are pretty, pretty easy to score options um, if you're comfortable in the air, but it's really just about reading. Can I read the ball and the speed? Because a lot of these I'm going to come in fast for because that's what I expect. Um, and I, I like that they're not all fast. This one I'm going to come in hot and I kind of have to float for a little bit and I have to adjust my speed because you're gonna come in hot and every pass is not gonna come in at the same speed. And you're gonna to have to learn how to read the ball. And when you fail like that, you can adjust it. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've hit the ball and pinched it off the, the, the crossbar right there, right off the backboard. Cause I was just too excited to go score a goal. Um, there's nothing better than scoring a goal, right? Especially an aerial goal coming in and you can just pound it off the uh, off the backboard coming in but when you come in too hot it pinches and then you end up getting scored on most likely so that's stuff that's uh, that's really good to train on and I highly recommend in these training packs don't get comfortable and know when these shots are coming because that kind of just defeats the purpose feel free to get confused run these shots over and over and over if i miss that shot i want to run it at least like four or five times because that 
is just going to help me correct because if I missed it, I obviously need more work on it. So um, I, I think it's a, a really good thing to be able to challenge yourself and see what kind of score you can get on these to see how many of these you can hit on the first try and keep moving on. Honestly, I, I'm not worried about that in the beginning. I want to just hit these reps over and over and over and over until these all feel comfortable to me. I'm, I'm feeling more comfortable with the ball coming off that right wall like that because I'm doing this. And the game throws me an off-speed pitch. I did not hit that very well, but you know what? I came in, I really wasn't expecting that angle, came in and I scored it. And that's pretty cool. So uh, go over and over and over until you don't have any embarrassing misses like that. And then then challenge yourself. Then see if you can get, there's 48 shots in this training see how many of those 48 you can hit and then set that as your bar set that as your challenge for yourself for the next time can you do better than that can you come in at wonky angles and do your little cooks or twist to get to where you're supposed to be and to be able to hit the ball with your windshield right there and knock it down so these are the best training packs i have these are the things that i use um, because a lot of aerials are trying to get kind of wonky little angles to score and i think it's really effective to try those the most um, because they they really do help you out in defensive situations as well because you understand the angles you understand the the little twists and the little touches you have to use on your car to get those to score because you've practiced these these offensive moves so much you just know how to hit the ball now so uh, in the interest of time, I'm trying to keep this uh, somewhat digestible and somewhat easy to, uh, to come back to and trying to keep it from being a little bit too crazy and a little bit too long. So I'm going to call it there. If there are additional things with these aerials that you folks need, um, if you end up needing more training packs, if you need help with specific things coming off the wall to aerial or... Uh, air dribbles, things like that. Um, I'd love to try and do those for you. I just don't want to make this a three hour long video <laughs> because there's there's so many nuances to this game. There's so many different small things that you can work on and all these tips and tricks and things that I, 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 can, I can give you and I can talk forever because I love this game. It's probably just not great to throw in this video. So um, I'm gonna call it here. And if there is anything else you want, anything else you need, any replays that you want us to look at, um, let us know. Uh, we're, we try to be super responsive on the YouTube, uh, on the Xbox, all that stuff. And um, we are actually super close to a thousand subs, which is insane. Um, Doc's been doing a, a ton of crate openings and things like that um, because he's just a, a freaking cool dude. Um, so I hope this type of content is effective for you as well. I hope this is things, these are things that you like. If not, feel free to let us know that too. Um, but for Doc, I am Sloth, we are the Average Gamer Guys, and I will see you next time.